Um, I think it's still likely to be mid. I think that should just be Moon's hero instead. Last pick something for mid one. You have some options. Closing out, the Monkey King's been left alone. That's a mid win signature. If it doesn't get banned out, I think that could be one great way of having this really aggressive core. You've got a lot of circles to play with there, Mike. Tide, Treant, Ravage, and Overgrowth on top of everything else with Wukongs can make it work really fast. So I, I think a core monkey could tie in for what SMG love to do. I think going back to Polaris, again, Pangolier, great pick, as you said as well. But it's just a, such an obvious pick because this is something Polaris has been running quite a fair bit in their Li Yu Li Ye New Year Cup. And they've been doing well with it. And again, as Savius has said, uh, Force has been feeling like he's uh, like he's Elon Musk for some reason. So <laughs> he wants to drive around on the Tesla. Can't yeah. have one. He has a Pangolier with a Rolling Thunder at the lead. So he can pretend he's got an electronic car with that acceleration Pango has. He, he can feel like he has one, Mike. Yeah, I suppose he can. That's fine. You, you got to live out your dreams somehow. Final ban outs to come, though. SMG. They get rid of the Razor for now, which is fair enough. I mean, you, you're going against the Lesh rack. Razor's never very uh, very fun to have to play against if you are playing Lesh. One more for SMG before we can move on. and Should be another position one here for Polaris that they're looking to ban out. I mean, you do have options like the Wraith King. I think Lifestealer could be a very good option here for, for the sign of Polaris if they wanted to go down that route. In fact, Lifestealer might be very, very good here. Do they yeah. ban it, though? Lifestealer does work. I think the issue for Lifestealer is the lane up against Tidehunter. Anchor Smash makes it very hard to farm. Yeah. So I don't think it's a massive worry for SMG because they can handle it with Tide early on, shut it down pretty fast. I think for Polaris, I still feel like a troll would be probably their best bet for Natsumi. Again, he's played it a couple of times. He plays it really well. Played it across his time in Obi Neon really well. And you've already got the Ogre to buff up your right clicks early on. Helps you build up your Fervor stacks. So I think Control would work out in that lane. Works out in your timings as well. And just kind of lines up a lot better. It still gives you something that can farm. But if need be, you can switch to a much more aggressive build. Sanjin Yasha, BKB, a Basher down the line. I think there's much more flex there. Still, SMG are taking their time with the bans. They, they ban out the Monkey King themselves. So they're not going to have the option for that aggressive pause one for mid one keen to see what they are actually going to close out with because i feel like that would have worked really well with what smg had again playing with wukong's ravage and overgrowth would have been really strong those team fights but they take it out themselves um that's an interesting one i feel like maybe they just really want to give the tide a good lane in that case polaris still has troll like they still have that warlord and you could also pick up the lifestealer for smg as well i, I don't think it'd be too bad for them either even the, the troll that you brought up, SMG could even take. I don't think it'd be bad in this matchup either. It's uh, We'll see. SMG, they have first pick here for this final pick. What does mid one feel like playing today in this game too? I mean, you, you could go something fast. You could go something late game and just play for protect one. Could be anti-mage again. You are up, up against the storm after all. Why the hell not try the AM one more time? <laughs> I think the AM is a harder sell for me in this game, Mike, because yeah, yeah, you're up against a Storm, your lane is up against Pango, which maybe isn't as bad as a Slaughter lane. Still pretty annoying. You could just go for the good old Swash and Lucky Shot build. They go with the TA instead, so I think that's a much more stable core for SMG. A stronger win condition for mid to play on the safe. And that just allows them to really focus in on the farm, build up towards the Dragonlance Desolator Blink BKB. And just get rolling from there. You don't have the best ways of burning true refraction here. From Polaris, Ignite is there, but it's not the fastest form of burn. So the TA is likely to be very protected in the middle of these fights, especially as soon as you get that BKB. And it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for Polaris to keep a lid on that. I'm wondering what they do go. You could still go for a favorable favorable court core matchup. It is the troll that I've been mentioning a lot. All so right, John. All troll right. does come out. There you, you get are. So the... two. You get Two it, out of five, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Forty percent success rate, John. I mean I I guess it's a career high for you, so that's good news here for, <laughs> for John X Fire and Well SMG Flowers, John. Uh, the drafts are complete. I must say personally, I do kind of lead towards the way of SMG this time around. The one thing I don't like about SMG's draft is I feel like the support duo is a little bit passive, but 
at the same time, I don't think you need much more aggression from your support duo anyway. John, which way do you lead in terms of drafts? Do you prefer Polaris? Do you prefer SMG going into this game number two? Hmm, I'd lean towards Polaris. I mean, I get your point about SMG. They have really good team fight. They've got the four heroes to stall out for a TA to hit farm. But I have been... I don't know, I, I just feel like Polaris has this lineup that gets off to a really fast start as well. And I think when it comes down towards late game, I would actually say Troll is a hard hero to deal with. Your disables on SMG are pretty long. You could at least play it with Disruption. A lot of a lot of this is hanging on Afu. Getting good Disruption on that Troll Warlord's uh, Battle Trance. Kind of working things around. So it, it's very even. I'd lean slightly towards Polaris, but not majorly. And if it's really just draft and... SMG is probably better off with a Thai TA once more. Like, can you imagine how many TIs have passed? Thai TA is still a thing, like, it's still there. Well, it does everything, John. It, it just does everything. I mean, why wouldn't it still be there, right? The, uh, the wise words of uh, Kuroki back then. <laughs> still, I mean, SMG Polaris, oh. game number two about to get underway. Very excited oh. to see how this one. What is it, John? What happened? Uh, I saw why this strategy time is taking a bit longer. Force and Moon both disconnected, reconnected. So hopefully we don't get any connection issues going into the game, Mike. But, you know, it's Southeast Asia. Something that does happen, but it does look like they have loaded in. So that's good news there, Mike. Yeah, no, absolutely. We'll get into a game number two between SMG and Polaris. And then we go. So you did go the way of Polaris in terms of drafts, but I believe you did say it was, uh, in your opinion, quite close. Yeah, it's pretty close. I think I'm leaning towards Polaris because of what they did in game one. But if it's just draft and SMG does have a probably the stronger draft by a slight margin. So it's like 50-50. If I consider the play style, I think Polaris just showed us they don't really care too much. They can play really strong. They've got the Ogre Jakiro on as well, Mike. So that's already a winning pick for me. Because you've got that, yeah. You, you look great. You know you're, you're gonna you're caught. You're gonna cause some silhouette issues. Because who knows? It looks like Jakira to me, Mike. I don't oh. see ogre. Did his belly get bigger as well with this cosmetic or something? Yep. Yeah, it's like a man. <laughs> he's like a giant poo bear or something. I kind of want it now, actually. I didn't realize his body. In fact, hold that thought. We should get serious now, John. Mid one's been caught out. A great vicious setup from Xavius. Mid one, he's gonna try and meld and delay this a little bit, but the chase continues. Mavis has another fire blast very soon, and mid one, he's gonna try digging through the tree line, but Natsumi able to take first blood straight off the bat against SMG. SMG though, they're gonna try and fight back a little bit, but Mavis, he seems to be just fine. In fact, they may counter initiate very soon if SMG does end up going too far, because Xavius, he does turn around again. Looking for that vicious setup. Onto Pile I Die, perhaps. They are going to spot Pile I Die, but it's not the angle you want him to be in to really set up a nice Fisher. Still a 2 for 2 trade. No, 3 for 1 trade on those bounties. No, it was a 2 for 2. I'm just colorblind, apparently. 2 for 2 trade on the bounties. <laughs> first blood to go the way of Polaris Esports. Definitely a great start as you do get that first blood on Natsumi. Yeah, that's going to be a great build up for him and the troll. Very open build up as well. On his hero, you could still opt for. Battle Fury, that's a rare one, but you could still go for it if the game's going well. You could go for Maelstrom, SMY to start. And he is going to be up against Raging and Afu on the Shadow Demon Tide, so... You've got a bit of early aggression coming out here from SMG that can come out. I mean, again, you kind of manage that uh, Tide pickup with the troll, and you're not very tanky here for Raging in the first few levels, so you have to watch yourself. Well, like you do. Raging Potato copying a hell of a lot of damage as Afu's going to try and hold Mavis back, but Mavis doing a great job of getting that early harassment out that he's looking for, even with that level 1 fire blast. But they might go again very soon. It's raging. Still not really at that tanky stage, so Mavis is having a look around. He'll get in range on raging. No stun to come out, though. We'll have a look at the other lanes while we still have a chance. Of course, mid lane, Moon and Lelouch going to be against each other. Hold that thought though, because I hear actually going on across the map, as it does seem like Xavius does commit a Fisher down bot lane. But John, talk to me about the mid lane. Who do you think has the advantage in this matchup? And this is going to be Leshrac favored more so than Storm. And that power spike for the Storm with level 3 isn't as 
Easy to pull off up against a ranged hero on the Lesh, so Moon should be having a great time building up, clearing out the creep wave. Lelouch has to work double time. He doesn't even opt for the Vortex. He knows it's nearly impossible to walk up. Vortex, get the static, get a couple of overloads and kind of work there. Just needs to clear out the creep wave. He's playing with fire there, but he does get the kill before he does go down. So I think Natsumi will be satisfied with that trade. So you, could do, you do get that golden bonus XP there for the Troll Warlord. And I suppose Arfu does get a kill on the Troll, but it's still a support SD at the end of the day. So Polaris is going to be pretty happy with that trade, I think. Yeah, you're not going to mind too much. I mean, Natsumi does lose out in a little bit of farm. Not the end of the world. You're cutting Raging Potato off from some... EXP he really needs, and afu has got a bit of the EXP advantage now. And they're also not giving Afu time to play in that jungle to stack. He's just forced to stay in lane, forced to try to be aggressive, to, you know, push back Natsumi, and it's still not doing much. Like, they've got their full wands up, they've got the stick on Mavis. Every single spell cast of that Shadow Poison just gives you more charges to burst heal. Like and it's just like not that. the ideal tide lane. I think you've got to accept that. I think in comparison to the bot lane here, for Polaris, you are getting more work done for their own off. Because their own aggression oh, lined up again. Oh. Yeah, top lane, John. They've got Arfu trapped up in the tree line with a nice block there from Mavis. He is stacking up those Shadow Poisons, but the damage is still flying out. Arfu is going to take out both of them. Oh, Arfu. He gets both the heroes at that top lane, and he drops the sticker, of course, the RIP. So he will just deny himself off to the T1 tower. Yeah, that's massive. Like he forces the overcommitment out from Polaris, so they finally get something going in that lane. Bot lane as well, it's dropping pretty low here for Polaris. The damage output of Pilot Eye and Midwind is pretty damn high. It can melt right through the Shaker, and this is where the issues rise up for Polaris in the off. Like it, it's a Shaker off lane, and once more it's the support. You're not really doing much for Xavius and helping out that lane up for Force. And if you do go too close, mid one with a melt can just melt you. You're not that true. So, Xavius is having a much slower start. Still stuck at level one at four minutes in, Mike. Really not the ideal. And he can't even get a mid rotation out to help uh, Lelouch in his matchup. Certainly not. If I go in, I might die. If I go in, I might die. Trying to get some stacks off while he can. Mavis trying to be very annoying about this. Just trying to block the camps off. So those Shadow Poisons, they really start to hurt at level two. Avis will respect the damage output of Arfu at the moment. How's the, how's the bot lane going? I mean, we, we talked about it a little bit. Mid one's still having a very free time right now on the TA, which is great news for SMG. And, well, there you go again, John. You, you pointed this out earlier, but that Meld Strike is, is really annoying for Force, as he just can't really abuse the Shield Crash. Every time he does, just to get some creeps going, he's just copying an insane amount of damage, even at level 1. Yeah, it's just painful for a melee hero like the Pangolier. And he's already out of mana, so you can't really sustain the swashbuckle spam anyway. And again, he doesn't have help from the Shaker. Xavius is just trying to build stacks up. Uh, he's not soaking EXP. He's having a slow time on that Shaker. We talk about him needing a blink down the line. This is not the kind of start you want for the hero, but it's kind of expected. I think uh, SMG, despite maybe taking a couple of losses up top, they are getting a lot more in their own safe lane. Like, compare the farm of mid one to Natsumi, this is a stronger start for the TA. There he is. A lot of damage being dealt to the Shaker. Pilai Dai will just chase him down over and over again, but the salve is there. Will be cancelled by Pilai Dai, and I think Pilai Dai should be able to secure this kill. The Xavius is running fast with those brown boots, and no, they don't have enough. Pilai Dai unable to really get the kill going. I suppose at the very least you force Xavius to walk back to the fountain, but a bit of a missed opportunity there for SMG. So mid lane now, yeah, Moon. Going in for a big dive past Force, but is not going to be able to get the kill either. I think that's where the value in just forcing the Shaker to walk back comes into play. He can't immediately TP for the mid defense. Even if he did, he's level 2, so he can't do much. Moon at level 6 with only one point in Edict can still make a lot of work happen on that tier 1. But Lelouch sees an opening to charge into, but often he's got the save. That he does, and Mavis will be around. Still, Lelouch gonna keep going onto that Shadow Demon, but Arthur a little bit tankier with the Living Armor, but not quite tanky enough, as now they could try to go onto Pilai Dai. They don't really want to dive too far for this. Pile Dai will turn around now. Along with Moon, they'll be able to take down Mavis. So it's going to be a support for a support trade. Not too bad either way. In fact, it did barely favor Polaris, but really just barely. I think it was about, what, 13 gold? Nothing to write home about.
yeah, it's not not anything that really turns the game. And I think overall, you're still pretty happy on the side of SMG. They are just applying the pressure, forcing people to commit down to mid to help Lelouch. Bit of a smoke out for Lelouch and Mavis. Fully topped up bottle on the TP, so maybe they find a target here. They could jump Raging. He does not have a soul ring, so no mana for the Ravage. It'd be a nice, simple pickup if they can pierce through his uh, durability here. Lelouch going to turn around, though. Go after the, uh, the Courier instead. And to be fair... Moon's energy booster was on that, so you do deny away the arcane runes, and that's going to be a little bit annoying for Moon now, as he's just going to be lacking mana at times. Not too big of a deal, but certainly a bit of an inconvenience here for the Leshrac. As the group up is there in the mid lane once again. Pile I die. Going to be around, ready to protect. Should see Mavis very soon, though Mavis is going to try and back himself out now, and... I suppose it is going to be all about securing those power runes. Very, very soon, but... But now no action in that mid lane. Both teams will just sit back a little bit. But again, when you've got a Leshrac versus Storm, the power runes are just so important. Especially if you've got an Arcane or a Regen. You just can't let that go the way of the other. Lelouch, he forced out of the mid lane, though Moon, thinking about going for a chase. Same time, Rune is there, but it's going to be an Invis and Arthur. Looks to have already kind of secured it, though Mavis now going to take it himself, but this may cost him his own life, as they do take his life away. Moon will pick up that kill, and the end, the Invis, probably not really worth taking in the first place. No, it's a sacrifice you make there on the Ogre. That will open up a bit of a shove on the mid, not much mana left on Moon. Xavius is going to be working that mid lane back, not... It's a, it's a shaker tree, you know, it, it's not much that you can get done there. You are buying some space out, a ton of space out, for Natsumi to farm, at least, and your troll is number one in that for it. Falcon blade up, Javelin flying in, Maelstrom on the way to being done, and it, it's at that point where the troll can farm fast, keep up pace with the TA, and maybe even force a couple of early fights once uh, additional items come in. So you're lining up for that timing here on Polaris, but you are also giving the same free farm to mid one, and that should be a mild concern. They are making moves from players to rectify that bot, though. Yeah, that they are, and they really want that T8. The mid one seems to have read this movement, and there was an observe ward that actually scouted all this out for SMG. So mid one should not really get caught with his pants down here, though he is going to keep farming those jungle camps. He will keep backing off. I still scan out just in case they were right behind him, but. Not quite, so Polaris unable to really capitalize off this rotation. I suppose they can go after the bottom tier 1 tower now, but it is certainly going to feel like a much slower process than what SMG can get done at the same time, as Moon has already dealt with the top tier 1 tower pretty much by himself. Back mid, or Xavius, going to get taken out by mid one, just on his own. So not only do they not get the TA, but they lose the support to the TA. Yeah. And they're still clumping around bot. They're not able to relieve that pressure on mid. The living armor is there from Pilata as well. It's a tree and you have to commit heavily to get that push. They will eventually. They're trying to cut the trees to find Pilata, but look at that. Our boy just running away in the trees just fine. He's fine there. Yeah. Very, very nice juke there from Pilata. And in the meantime, mid tier 1 is going down. This is not a good trade for Polaris Esports whatsoever. SMG kind of getting away with murder here is... They'll take the mid-tier one down. Keep in mind, Polaris did the exact same thing on their left track as Pile High Tai now. Gonna be spotted out by force, but again, they just can't really catch it. He'll just keep hanging around that tree line and just wasting more and more time from Polaris. Yeah, it's making them think twice and... Again, with the mid down, you're in a really good position here for SMG to take over the top. Jungle and Moon already getting to work, clearing out some of those camps. They've also just kept mid one around to keep that farm game going. Desolator gonna be up next, Mike. Only lacking one Mitral Hammer at this point for gold. So you are almost at the point. Still charge forward from Lelouch. Rage Potato has been caught out as the Fisher was there. Still, he is a tanky boy and now the turnaround might be upon us. The Ravage, it's perfectly timed from Raging though Lelouch. He is still alive. Moon could not finish him off in time. Did not commit the Lightning Storm. Maybe just assuming the damage wasn't there. Still raging, going to be chased down as the Echo now committed by Xavius, but it does nothing. It does not connect onto Raging Potato. That's going to be forced to drop to boot. A very messy engagement from both ends, but it does end up favoring SMG in the end. Yeah. 
Just a bit of a small mistake. I think they stacked the Ravage and the, sp the Splitter at the same time. So they didn't get as much stuns as they want. And now Lelouch is going to turn again. He's going to try onto that Shadow Demon. Make sure they don't have the save. But Arfu, he'll save himself as now Moon. Going to turn back around with a double stun out. And now the Pulse Nova. Still Lelouch will keep going forward and does get the Ogre kill. He just needs to get himself out now. He should be fine to do so. He's got plenty of mana. So they get something for their trouble. Not the, not the greatest kill, but it's something. Maybe oh. another. Raging. Stuck around to try and get the power rune, but now he's being punished for it. Still too tanky though for the storm to deal with, so Raging Potato, he'll be just fine. Yeah, it's a lot of back and forth. SMG is starting to really pull ahead though. So they are getting a ton of space out for mid one in comparison to Natsumi on the troll. And they are finding a couple of kills for their efforts. They are putting a lot of pressure in the map, which is exactly what they need to do up against Polaris. And they're going to smoke again. It's just Moon and Afu, but that's all the setup you need for the Lush. Just have the Shadow Demon Disruption ready on hand to really make sure the stun lands. And pretty much anyone dies here. Mid lane, force. Might need to pop that Rolling Thunder ASAP as Moon. He'll be in the chase with the Yule Scepter up, and he does make it in time. Afu already out with the purge, and that'll mean Force is set to drop. Still, Lelouch gonna zip in and try to get some form of a trade. Once Afu he goes, but Afu is gonna survive with that bonus living armor, and now Lelouch is way too low on mana to keep going any longer. And so, with that, you get a great kill onto Force, and that'll be more than enough for SMG to keep poking and prodding. At that mid tier 2 tower, in fact, Pilei die. Great game sense has caught out the storm with the overgrowth, but is it going to last long enough? Well, you bet your ass it will, because Moon, he was there with the Yule Scepter, and that's going to mean a great kill onto Lelouch now. The force, going to try and move in onto Arfu, get some form of a trade, but it's not going to work out. Not quite yet. Arfu, though, does finally get caught with the Fisher, and he will go down. So SMG looking to force another team fight with this new blink up from Raging. They'll get Mavis. They won't find another real target to get, but they've got Roshan. And that's much more important. They've got the Deso up in mid one. It's just farming like crazy right now all across the map. And make short work of Rosh. The first age is going to go the way of SMG. Polaris not in position to fight back. Moon with two lives now. And be able to do more. They do find a pick off on Pi like Die. But that's just the train. And we all know Pilot Ice playstyle, Mike. He's very fine with just dying over and over again for the team. Yeah, well, no, absolutely. The Xavius may not be so happy dying over and over again, but it seems like that's the predicament he's caught himself in, unless the Echo is going to be committed. But Raging Potato, he'll be there with the gush to make sure this amounts to nothing. Xavius, he's getting quite desperate now for that blink to be up, John, and he is still about 1k off it. So it's a slow process, just again, because the laning phase didn't amount to much from Polaris in the bot lane. They couldn't rotate mid, so that early start for a Shaker and finding some kills didn't work out, and their cores are really greedy. They need a ton of space for a troll and a storm. Not much bleed over left for a Shaker, and they're just stuck in this awkward spot. Off who though? Yep, it's going out. Disruption is there to buy some time, but not for long, surely. Still, they might be able to counter-initiate in time as Afu. He lasts quite a while. Meanwhile, Natsumi, he barely gets caught here by Moon. The stun is going to land. Natsumi surely has no way to survive, and he does not. Moon takes out a great kill here for SMG, as they want Force 2, and they might just be able to get him. Force, he'll keep trying to run. In fact, never mind him. They'll go after Mavis instead. He's just the easier target. The closest guy around and SMG they'll find two for the price of one and more importantly they find Natsumi on that troll warlord. Kill off the big wind condition of Polaris. Just oh, trying to farm. They even find the Lush up top just farming by himself and Midwind just rips him to shreds. I mean it's a TA would desolate her up. She just melts these heroes. You don't have anything at all on the storm to stay alive so a really easy hero to rip apart and Polaris has to measure themselves, Mike. They've got to slow the pace down somehow. They've just got to get some farm space out for the Troll and Storm. They cannot afford to throw these cores up front. They've got to make some sacrifices, and I think that's down to the supports and to Force to just show up and be the sacrificial lambs to build up that Storm and the uh, Troll right now. So it looks like SMG want to get very aggressive here with this net worth advantage they have gained. Two lanes being pushed in at the same time is proving to be very difficult for Polaris to try and defend against. They've got to split up. 
There is going to be a three-man smoke being committed by Polaris though, and they'll head up towards the top side where they are going to find Pile I Die to break the smoke. This is not quite the kill they wanted. You know they wanted mid one, but Pile I Die, he's going to make it as hard as possible. In fact, they're going to counter-initiate. They're going to try and fight this one out, but no mid one. He has TP'd away, or rather blinked away, as Moon has jumped in, but he does have the Aegis. The Raging does also have a ra Ravage to set up if he wants. His mid one does get Mavis. And Xavius... Well, he's still running, but Raging is right behind. It won't matter though. They'll both TP away. Yeah, I Who think they, they found a juicier target. Natsumi showed himself in lane for a bit in that board. That looks like a great Ravage target to me, John. Natsumi. He does have Battle Trance, but you know he doesn't want to pop it right now. He will anyway, and there's your Ravage out. Moon should be able to follow up. Veluge though, he's going to come in and try and help out. He's got Moon. It might be enough to take him out. In fact, they've got the Aegis down, but Natsumi, he still dies to the tide anyway. And Veluge is dropping very, very low now. He's got no mana left on the Storm. He really just needs to get the hell out of there. But he does have the rest of his team behind him to help out. Still Moon. He's a bit of a raid boss right now. This could be a hard target. No, never mind, Moon. He's gone too far. They do take him down but now can they get the rest out of here is our food is proving to be a bit of an issue with all these shadow poisons but not quite as big of an issue as you would have hoped as an smg fan because they're going to turn right back around and they will clean up another here so smg just going way too far yeah just bleeding out one by one it looked like a good jump in polaris were ready to take that fight back I mean, you've got a lot of zip potential with Lelouch. He was fully topped up at the start of the fight. And I like this build up here in our storm. He's going for the BKB. He knows he's got to fight a little bit earlier than he'd want to. And so he's just going to take point for the team, really start to back up force on that Pangolier and getting the initiation off and really buy the space for Natsumi. And that should allow them to take some of these fights, negate the damage output of Moon entirely. They will have to... Kind of kick up the pace though. It's still a 6k lead for SMG. You still have this massive TA who's also going to have a BKB really early on. And inside of SMG aren't just going to rest. You know, they might not have Ravage up, but they are still playing Poke and Prod. Maybe a bit too forward. Or of course back off, but they could find some nice solo pickoffs here if you're not careful. Mavis, he's gone. That's an easy kill here for mid one. It's kind of like you pointed out, John. With the, with the Deso up so early, it's very easy for mid one to get these kills by himself. It seems like he wants even a bit more here. Force and Xavier is going to try and jump in onto Pile I Die, but it's a bit of a bait here for mid one. Force tried to rolling away, and he might just make it. With the rolling thunder, it's proven to be enough to get out. However, top lane, Moon is split pushing once again on the left track, but this time he is truly by himself. Never mind, he is not by himself. Raging's going to come right back in. Moon, he's going to try and run. Force, Veluche, they cannot deal with the tide right now, but maybe with four heroes they can. So will keep the chase going. As Natsumi will chase down Raging Potato, but they just don't seem to have the damage. Xavius dies across the map, and Moon, he's going to turn around. Force is dead. Natsumi, he is still moving with the BKB out. He barely avoids the Ravage, but Moon is still not dying as the Yules comes out. Lelouch, now he's out of mana. Moon, he's going to find another kill. And now the overgrowth is out. Pile I die. Going to lock them down as Moon is still duking them out. And Natsumi, he is eventually just going to drop to mid one as they've got Mavis on the Ogre. A complete disaster for Polaris Esports. They get wiped. And it all goes back to the left track, John. Moon was just not dying today. Not that time at least. No. It's just so durable. Just the Kai Assange, the stat resist that gives is ridiculous, the added HP, the Yule's to kind of stall out as well. And mid one wasn't even in that fight. The traps did work for him from across the map, so they managed to make it work here for SMG. Polaris just forcing the issue too hard. I get they've got the BKB. They feel confident for that. It's just you don't have damage on Natsumi. You don't really have damage on Lelouch either. So you've got your ability on hand. You don't really have anything to pierce through SMG as they stand. And that's causing issues. Um, I think they, they really just need to be able to line up, maybe force a group up from SMG and try to look for that good slam from Xavius. He's got the blink. He's got the slam ready to go. Xavius is one of those players as well in the shaker where once he does hit blink, the team does play around that well. And we've got to see Polaris be disciplined because they're at 11k loss here. It's a hard game to bounce back from. Polaris, 
Getting prepared to try and defend this tier 2 mid. Rolling Thunder's there. They've got the vision. That's a great start from Force. Onto 2, but the disruption is going to save mid 1. And now they can pop that BKB and turn around. Natsumi, meanwhile, already dropping so low. Needs to pop the battle trance and does. But what's it going to get done? In the meantime, Moon is still fighting everybody else. As Natsumi's just trapped up between a rock and a hard place. Mid 1's on a godlike spree. And now maybe they could even find Mavis on this ogre. He is going to try and get himself out. But they've got the vision. They've got the information and they will just eventually deal with Mavis. Nothing Polaris Esports can do about it. SMG, they should be able to get this mid tier 2 tower, no problem. They're going to be able to get that push going. I mean, they've got the Lesh, they've got the Desu TA. Doesn't take much to melt the objectives. And Polaris are losing a lot of ground. They keep forcing out these fights. They haven't been able to find that good angle for Xavius to get the slam off. They're going to try again on Raging. Not easy, and he's got Ravage in three. He's dropping low, but the Ravage is coming. But no, he won't be able to get it in time. Just a split second away from being able to tap that R button and force a counter initiation. Polaris, can they keep going? No B BKB on mid one for another seven seconds. Dip in, they saw Arfu, but Xavius just melts to the damage of mid one, and Arfu is not dying. Not that quickly as, oh, they oh got the God. double stun into the side blades. Mid one, he's on a triple. He might just go for an ultra. That Moon, he wants to take that away from him. He's onto Mavis. Natsumi again going to pop the battle transfer for what? What can he do? Mid one's just going to clap at him. He is just going to clap at him as he just tries to swing away. Tips out from mid one. In fact, everyone's tipping Natsumi now. It just doesn't feel good as the toll when you have to press R like that, John. It's not a great feeling. No, mid one just had a right read. He ripped the back line. He took care of the shaker. No slams from Savius, and now he's all alone for this defense. Response are short, but with a lot of their big spells gone, with that rolling thunder gone, it's so hard to see them get a good defense off because there's still a ravage here when Raging Tornado does hook up. There's still a lot of team fight left for SFG and. These racks still just melt. They, they need to try something though from the side of Polaris and maybe they find a good angle with a smoke. Perhaps. They're gonna have to try it. Polaris Esports again. I mean, 19k behind, it's, it's a very rough position to try and force these smokes, but they may have to because Roshan's about to start. Mind you, mid one's now got a full Daedalus up, so damage output has increased here for our TA and when things get very, very scary for Clarice Esports. And there'll be no contest. That'll be the second Roshan of the game to drop. Mid one will take both items. Shards up, Aegis up. And now it's time for high ground. And with all these spells available, I guess we'll find the answer very soon. But how do you stop them? You need a good slam. I think that's really Radiance important. We haven't seen one yet from Xavius this entire game. SMG has been really good at cutting off that shaker, forcing some very awkward slams to just find one kill. There is a BKB up now in Lelouch, though. This could be the difference, but he's got to use it in a good in a good way to turn these fights. It's rough for Lelouch. The force has already been caught. He'll swash, though. He'll create that gap. Mid one almost looking like he doesn't even want to bother with the other lanes. Was looking towards those tier 4 towers, but there's just too many ways to chip away at them and stun them up, so he'd rather just go after the outer objectives now. Keep in mind, they can't go for Megas yet. There is still a tier 2 tower at that bot lane to be addressed here by SMG. Still mid one, he's gonna address Mavis's life at the moment, but Lelouch has jumped in and now the Ravage! Oh they got God. three targets! Raging Potato sets up everything perfectly, and now the Overgrowth flies in. That's Force gone. It's gonna be a full team wipe as the GG's called. Natsumi, he wants no more part in this. Hands up from mid one, but there's no high five coming, as they'll secure the kill before the game ends. And that'll be a one for one draw between SMG and Polaris Esports to end off this best of two series. Yeah, it's a strong showing from SMG this time around. They had so much great hold on their towers. They had really strong push as well with a Lush Rack pick. And Polaris, and they open up confidently. They take that Shaker, they take the Storm very early on in the draft. I think that just left, left them really vulnerable to SMG just getting a faster lineup because Storm is just naturally so slow. It's just so slow to get off. Like, we saw, what, Akaya BKB, really? The only items coming out from there from Lelouch. And that's just not enough. 
And he had to share a lot of that form with Natsumi, who also didn't have enough room to grow big. And think that's um, it's all it really was, a pacing issue. Polaris's draft was too slow. SMG finally go back to that playstyle we know them for, a very fast, aggressive playstyle. And even the lane matchups, mid one, up against a Pango, up against a Shaker, just had such a free lane. There was nothing Saviors could do to relieve that. And that just gave the TA such a strong snowball start there, Mike. Oh, absolutely. With that, though, Jonathan, we do have our final series coming up now between Execration and Young Gun Galactical. So one more best of two series for the night. With that, it is MLP, Dota, and John X Fire, and we're going to head off to a 15-minute break. But right after that break, we'll be back with Game 1's draft between Execration and YG.